Excellent. Hey everyone and welcome to my builds video for January 2016. Uh, basically how this works is every month I create a couple PC parts lists. Uh, these are all based on your votes and your feedback. So uh, this month, based on last month's uh, straw poll that I did in, uh, in December, uh, I'm going to be building a Haswell or LGA 1155 system. Um, these were the votes. It was very close. Uh, we also had PC gaming and streaming systems and several of the other ones like that. So thank you to all of you guys who went and voted in that. And I do have another uh, straw poll for uh, February. So let me go ahead and post that in live chat right now. By the way, I'm streaming this live as well as... Uh, uploading it to YouTube later. So thanks to all you guys who are jumping in and viewing this live. It's very impromptu. I don't really have a schedule for these um, when I record them live, but I like recording them live anyway. Vote for next month if you want to see me do other types of builds in February. I included quite a few from last month because I thought there were some good ones. PC gaming and streaming, farewell to AM3 Plus build, budget Skylake with an 1151 Pentium CPU, or maybe even one of those ones that you can now overclock uh, with the BCLK, or maybe a silent passively cooled HTCP, I think or HT, HTPC, I think all of those would be fairly exciting. So for this month I'm doing an LG 1150 build. That's uh, a little bit older. LG 1150 is not the current most uh, most up-to-date generation socket from Intel. There's currently Skylake, which is LG 1151. So what we're doing here is delving into just the recent past in order to make things hopefully a little bit more uh, budget-friendly. Um, and since I was also doing a second build this uh, month based around this processor right here, which is Intel's G3258 uh, dual core overclockable Pentium Anniversary Edition, uh, actually both of these systems are going to be LGA 1150. Um, so go back a month or two if you want to see some Skylake builds, I've already done a few of those. Um, the first one is going to be a gaming system based on your request. It's going to be about $800 price point. Second one that I've uh, put together is going to be about a $400 price point with the G3258. It's a little expensive for a G3258, but I'm actually going to be building this system uh, for my parents next week. I'm going to be updating their extremely old and slow computer that they're currently using right now, updating them to an SSD and all that good stuff. And I will be doing a video on that, so uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see that when it's out. A few quick notes before we dive into the first builds parts list. One is that the cost I'm listing is just for the system and the hardware. This does not include monitor, monitor, monitor or peripherals, unless I say otherwise. Uh, also does not include an operating system, although Kingwin uh, is a great place to do that, and you can get Windows 10 for like 20 to 40 bucks, depending on whether you go OEM or not. Uh, I also am going to be using PC Part Picker because it makes for easy PC parts shopping. They also have compatib compatibility filters and all that good stuff, and links to these builds are going to be uh, in the description below on YouTube. Sorry to you guys watching live, I don't have them ready for you quite yet. Uh, there's also going to be a straw poll link to this uh, February voting, so you guys can go and vote on that, and let me know what you want to see. Oh, I'm zooming in on the chat instead of this over here. Here. That's better. All right. Then you can tell me what you want to see in February. Okay, let's uh, dive right into the first build. That's this one right here. PC Part Pickers. So this, this is about an $800 bang for the buck LGA 1150 uh, PC. And I'll be honest, I don't usually build with, with older hardware like this. We're hitting sort of a, a weird sort of transition point when it comes to uh, the... the uh, Haswell stuff, which is that the motherboards are starting to already get harder to find. You need a uh, Z87 or Z97 motherboard if you want uh, at least an overclockable uh, uh, Intel Haswell chip. Uh, for this particular build, I went with the 4690K. And then the other thing I did, since this is supposed to be a bang for the buck system, is that I did include, or I'm at least going to reference quite a bit for mail-in rebates, because mail-in rebates are a great way to really save on a system. You just have to be able to give, do that upfront cost and then be diligent about well, first testing your build and then turning in the re mail and rebates like right away. All right, so our first uh, product is going to be, of course, the 4690K. I kind of um, had a few other options here. There's, of course, the lesser i5s that are available, um, but they're not overclockable. There's also the Xeon uh, 1233V3 or whatever it is that you can also drop in here, which is a quad core, which you can get for about $220. Now, this one, if you want a really good deal on it, 220 bucks, you can get it. For in-store pickup at Micro Center. Chances are if you're buying this online though you're going to be paying about $230 to $240. Bear in mind that a 6600K is going for about $25 to $35 more than that. So that's the price cut you're getting by going with uh, a older processor on here. And when it comes strictly to gaming you're not going to see much of a performance boost by going with Skylake. The main reason why you might go with Skylake over this 
is uh, just for the newer technology that's available, the newer motherboards, stuff like NVMe supports, uh, faster M.2 connections and that kind of thing. Anyway though, so I stuck with the 4690K and that's what the rest of the build is based around. Uh, and you'll see down here at the bottom, my total price came out to, well, if I show you guys, total price came up out to a little over $800, but that's not including mail-in rebates. So for instance, if we look at the Hyper 212 Evo, which I chose, which is just kind of the default, you can get it for as cheap as 25 bucks with a $10 mail-in rebate. Uh, or about 30 if you're just buying it straight straight up. The motherboard is the ASRock Z97 Extreme 3. <clears throat> this is a lower end Z97 motherboard, but again, here's where we're running into some difficulties with actually finding compatible motherboards for Z97. The stock at retailers like Newegg that sell new product is getting uh, smaller and smaller. And usually with PC hardware, there's a transition. Stock will start to drop off as parts get, to, say, a year to two old, depending on what part you're talking about. And then you'll have these secondary retailers who still have new product, but they grossly overprice it. So, for instance, I was looking at 4770Ks as a possible option for this. Those are all selling at retail for like $420 plus, which is absurd. Don't buy a 4770K for that when you can get a 6700K, which is two years newer for uh, cheaper. Anyway, uh, you can still get $100-ish motherboards though in Z97. This is a pretty decent little offering from ASRock. It's blue and black overall. Color scheme is always the first to go when it comes to uh, budget builds, but this one again has a $20 mail and rebate. So even though the price listed uh, on the parts list is 100, you can actually get it for 80 if you include that mail and rebate. So um, bear that in mind. For memory, I just went with this very simple Corsair Vengeance kit. Um, I Again, uh, aesthetics go out the window here, uh, but this is a great little kit. I've actually used this kit many times in different varieties. It's low profile, it's black, it blends in. The green PCB doesn't stand out at all once it's slotted in. And $35 for 8 gigs. And I don't care that it's 1600 speed, that's not going to affect anything. Okay, for the next thing we have our video card, and for that I went with AMD. This is a PowerColor PCS Plus Radeon R9 380. A uh, very powerful GPU, a little bit more power hungry, but uh, we have plenty of power for that. And 185 with again a $20 mail-in rebate, so you can get it down to 165. So again, if you're if you're looking to bang for the buck, oh, I'm, wait, yeah, sorry, wrong uh, wrong click. If you're looking to bang for the buck and you're looking at all these prices I have listed here, most of these or a lot of these have mail-in rebates, so you can get it for even less than uh, the 810 you see here, probably 750, even in the low 700s, if you were to be diligent and redeem all those. For a solid state drive, I went with the ADATA Premier SP550. 60 bucks for a 250, 240 gig SSD is kind of like the price point I'm going for right now. 65-ish as well. There's other ones down in that range. This is the cheapest one that's available straight up on Amazon right now, and it's an SP550, and it will do everything for SATA 3 drives. Sure, you could compare it to like a 850 uh, Pro from Samsung or something, which is like a little bit faster, but by and large, it's going to be uh, plenty for you. I also included a two terabyte hard drive here. This is the famed Hitachi Desk Star um, that got really well reviewed um, in the uh, oh shoot, I'm forgetting the name of the place right now, but the place that does a bunch of consumer hard drives in, a, in an enterprise environment, and these have been shown to have very good lifespan as it goes. Two terabytes, uh, seventy dollars, still a little bit more expensive than I would have liked to have spent, but I'm also clicking on the wrong things. Okay, that brings us to pretty much everything except the case and the power supply. Let's talk about the case and the power supply. This is a Rosewell Galaxy-03. It's black, and it's $30 after a $10 mail-in rebate card. Uh, I hate the look of this case. I'm not going to even... This case looks disgusting. I hate I hate it. <laughs> it's, just, it's purely for functionality here. Uh, it's got USB 3.0 on the front. It actually comes with three fans installed, which is unique. I was looking for I was looking at one case fan or one fan cases and adding a second one, but this one comes with the 120 in top, front and the back. Thirty dollars painted interior. Again, it's hideous. It's just hideous. But I uh, but it really gets the job done for thirty bucks. So if if you really don't like the look of that case, then uh, Spend a little bit more money, I guess, and get something a little bit nicer. Because if you want to spend 50 plus, there's a lot of other options up there. But trying to keep the price down, bang for the buck. All right, um, here's power supply. Deep cool 550 watt, 80 plus gold certified. I was planning on an 80 plus bronze, and then I spotted this at Newegg right now. It's from Deep Cool. I don't know a lot of reviews on this, but it's 80 plus gold rated, and it's got to have decent internals if it's got that. $60 without even being discounted. And look at the cables. It's not modular. Bear that in mind, but the cables are all black. And I was just like, wow, that's a, that's a really good deal for a 550 watt power supply, which will run pretty much any single card GPU configuration that you could throw at it right now, and all black cabling. 
and $60 and 80 plus gold. I was like, I got to use this. In fact, I almost used it in the second system I put together as well, but I, I decided to go with my initial choice there. Um, but anyway, that's the deep cool DQ550ST, 550 watt. And again, that entire build all together is $810 straight up if you buy it, if you buy all the stuff from Amazon and Newegg and I guess Super Bees, which is also listed here. Uh, or uh, take advantage of some of those mail-in rebates and you can probably chop a good 80 to $100 off of the total price once you get that money back. So, hey, I was pretty happy with that little build there. All right, let's move on to my second build. Second build, again, is a G3258 build. Um, this one I'm putting together for my parents who are using a very outdated system right now. I don't even know exactly what's in there. I built it for them too long ago for me to remember what's in it, but they've been complaining to me recently that it's very slow. I'm going to update it to something new, something much smaller, uh, something that also has an SSD for a base and uh, this processor, which is overclockable and I'm going to overclock it too. So that's kind of where I started off was with was I knew I was going to use a G3258. So again, this is a second LGA 1150 system. That's kind of the theme for the January builds, I suppose. Uh, came out to about 400 bucks overall, a little over 400 as listed here, but uh, again, bear in mind there are some mail-in rebates and some other things that aren't necessarily shown there. So the G3258 you can get super cheap, 50 bucks if you want to walk into a micro center, but other than that it's going to cost you 65 to 70, um, which is a very good price for a little dual core processor, especially if you take advantage of the overclocking. Uh, I went with the Hyper 212 again just because I, I'm either lazy or it's just a very effective and cheap cooler. There are some less expensive ones like the Hyper T2 that I've used recently, but um, honestly for 30 bucks, the mounting mechanism you get for this, and I really want to try to push this G3258 uh, decently hard to, to try to make it nice and snappy. Uh, for a motherboard, I ran into, again, the same issue that I was running in with the prior build, which is that when you're looking at motherboards, I was originally going to do a mini ITX system here, and there's really, really slim pickings for uh, Z97 boards. They're just getting at retail, they're getting less and less common. So places like Newegg the rep and Amazon, the reputable places, just don't have as much stock available. Um, which does mean that um, the ones that are there are often like kind of the, the longer lifespan, more budget models. But this is a, this is a Gigabyte Z97M DS3H. It is $90. It also has a $10 mail-in rebate, so um, you know you can get some some money back there. Micro ATX. I went with Micro ATX instead of Mini ATX. I figured, well, Micro ATX isn't too bad. It does give a little bit of expansion options. I'm not going to be doing a graphics card in this build because they don't really need it. But my mom did retire recently, so I'm not going to rule it out that maybe maybe I will throw in a graphics card there, like in the future or something, and and see if I can get her to play some games. Who knows? We'll we'll see how bored she gets now that she's. Retired. Anyway, uh, 90 bucks or 80 bucks, I should say, after the rebate for this nice little board. And it's black and it matches pretty nicely. Okay, uh, going over the rest of the parts, if I hit the back button, uh, CPU, cooler, uh, the me motherboard, of course. Uh, memory. I spent a little bit more on the memory on this. It's still an 8 gig kit, 2 by 4 gigs. I just uh, basically got faster speed memory since they're going to be using the integrated uh, GPU faster memory will improve the performance of that. So I went 2400 speed. This is the cheapest 2400 speed memory kit I could find from G-Skill. $40 for 2400 speed. Look how tiny that little picture is. I'm sure you guys get the general idea, right? Anyway, it's the Aries series. Um, yeah, and again, I just I used the PC part picker drill down stuff for a 2x4 gig kit. I chose the memory speeds that are a little bit faster, like 1866, 2400, 2600, 2666. And then I just uh, sorted by price, and I chose the uh, um, among the cheapest ones that were the fastest speed, looked the best, and were from brands I had heard of, like G-Skill. Anyway, uh, for the SSD, I went with the exact same solid-state drive from the build before. Again, 60 bucks for 240 gig, and uh, I don't tend to discriminate too much unless I'm actually buying uh, an SSD like this, you know, specifically for use with. I don't know, video editing or something, then I might look more closely at the actual full IOPS and megabytes per second. But look, pretty much any like decent SSD is going to be able to do upper five, you know, above 500 megabytes, megabytes per second reads and writes, uh, and then 75,000 IOPS. That's perfectly, perfectly adequate, especially for a home system. Uh, and then, of course, we wanted 240 gigs of space. All right, uh, go back to my build. Where'd my build go? I lost it. Okay. Um, finally, we have a case and power supply. And uh, again, here I went with something that I already have on hand, which is a Cooler Master Silencio uh, 652. 
Now, um, the weird thing here is that you might notice I punched this in directly for $60. That is because the specific version that I wanted, which is the version without the window, which is the one that I have on hand here, uh, is $60 at Newegg, $40 after a $20 mail-in rebate card. Very nice little case. It's very quiet. Uh, comes with two fans that are also very quiet. So I felt this was worth spending a little bit more on, especially since um, it's for the parents and I want it to be quiet and I want it to look pretty sleek and all, and I didn't want to give them some hideous Rosewill abomination case. Um, anyway, so gold award, silence award from overclock3d.net. This is a this is a solid little case, and uh, and I like it, and I will build a mini ITX system in it. Um, one thing to point out is that it does have two fans in that case, and one thing I noted when I looked at the motherboard was the motherboard only has one fan header. So I've also added uh, this little guy here. Or it's not actually on the parts list, but this is on Newegg. It's two dollars. Um, it's just a sleeved uh, four pin to uh, splitter for fan header. So you can I can plug both of those uh, case fans in uh, for the Silencio, and everything will work. Um, lastly, it's a power supply, and here I also went with the Cooler Master one. Uh, this one, again, I almost swapped out for that Deep Cool one because the Deep Cool one is 80 plus gold, so who knows? I may still do that. We'll see how things go. This one is a little bit cheaper, like by about five bucks at Newegg if you get it with the mail and rebate right now. But the reason why it's not listed as cheap or as cheap on PC Part Picker is because um, it's sold out or it's out of stock at Newegg right now. Get, get your featured sellers out of my face. Um, yeah, so anyway, go with a deep cool one if this one's not available for you. Um, but this one's also pretty decent uh, from Cooler Master Modular, so that's nice as well. Modular's nicer for a smaller case. I guess I was more considering the ITX uh, possibility of that when I first chose this power supply. But hey, there you guys have it. Uh, my two builds. Again, I'm going to be building the second one here, the G3258 uh, base system. That will be uh, for my parents. I'll be posting that on my channel here very, very soon. Uh, thanks to all you guys who have jumped in to uh, chat and said hello. One thing to point out here before I go, when it comes to the Haswell-based systems, Haswell and the Haswell Refresh, is uh, all of the overclocking on these processors is um, much more associated with the processor's capability than the motherboard's capability. So the high-end overclocking motherboards that they have for Z87 and Z97 uh, will overclock just as well as the lowest end ones, unless you're talking about like exotic cooling and stuff like that. That's not the case for Skylake. Skylake, the the uh, power delivery has been moved back off of the processor, um, but it is nice if you're looking to overclock a Haswell processor, and if you're looking to get something like I've uh, the builds I've done today, where you're trying to get a little bit more bang for the buck and you can find a bargain on slightly older parts, um, is even a lower end uh, Z87 or Z97 motherboard will still overclock a uh, 4690K just as well. So that's nice too. Anyway guys, uh, that's all for this video. Thank you all again for joining me. Uh, don't forget to vote for next month's builds via the link down there. Stay tuned for more videos coming up soon. I have a, a NAS build with Logan that I uh, have been promising for quite a while. I'm actually going to finish that up. Also, you can check out my store, store.paulcyber.net for shirts, mugs, and glasses. Uh, hit the like button on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more stuff, and we'll see you all next time.